Consider the following sentence or the following string. If you fail to practice your art, it will soon disappear. Let's count how many words there are in this particular string. Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven words in total. Now let's count the spaces between the words. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's have a look at another example. Python strings are immutable. Count the words one, two, three, four. Let's count the spaces one, two, three. If we look at the first string, the first sentence, if you fail to practice your art, it will soon disappear. There are 11 words and 10 spaces. So we can see the number of words is one bigger than the number of spaces. If we have a look at Python strings are immutable, we can see that there are four words and three spaces. Again, the number of words is one bigger than the number of spaces. So if you counted the spaces and added one, you would get the number of words. Now we're going to use this to write a computer program that will enable us to count how many words there are in a string or in a sentence by counting the spaces between the words and adding one to that number. This computer program will allow the user of the program to enter a sentence and then the program will report back how many words appear in that particular sentence. Before we go on to look at the program in detail, what I would like to do is to look at the general structure of the program. If we look here, we can see we have two program statements and they form a mini sequence construct. Following that, we have this iteration construct and following the iteration construct, we have three more program statements and they form their own sequence. This one, followed by this, followed by this. If we go back now and look at the iteration construct and look inside the iteration construct, we can see we have a selection construct. So here what we have, we have an example of nested structures. We have a selection nested inside an iteration, another word for an iteration being a repetition. Now this particular program will allow the user to enter a string or enter a sentence and the program will report back how many words exist in that particular sentence. This is the first program statement to execute and what it's going to do is going to put this string on the output screen. So if we have a look at what we get you can see it says please enter a sentence and now the user will enter an appropriate sentence and they're going to type in if you fail to practice your art it will soon disappear I've used this example because that's the one we looked at at the beginning of the video and we know that there is 11 words in this particular sentence we then come here where space underscore count is made equal to zero in other words we initialize this to zero because this is going to hold how many characters that are spaces in the sentence. So in other words, it's going to count the number of spaces that exist in the sentence the user has entered. And we know there's 10 spaces because we looked at it at the beginning of the video. Then we come on to this iteration construct. And of course, the first time through, what's going to happen is this character here is going to pick up this first letter in the sentence which you can see is capital I we then enter the loop and this says if character is the same as and this is a space it's a double quote I've hit the space bar when I type the program and then I've got a closing quote so what we're really asking here is whether the capital I is the same as a space well it's clearly not is it so this will return false. Now if that's false, it means we do not execute what's inside the selection construct. So this line is not executed. In other words, we don't increment the space count variable. Why? Well, we haven't found a space yet. So what now happens, we go back to this line and character now picks up the F. When it picks up the F, we then go in here 
and it says if character is the same as a space well it's an f so if it is an f f is not the same as a space so that is false consequently this is not executed we now go back to here and this time character picks up this space then we go into the loop and we ask if character which is a space is the same as a space now that is true consequently this is now executed and the space count becomes equal to the space count plus one and of course we initialized the space count here didn't we to a zero so now of course space count is a one which it should be because it's counted its first space of course we now enter the loop again and on this occasion the character picks up the y and when we go into here we ask is the character which is a y the same as a space well it clearly isn't so this line is not executed so we don't increment the space count then we go in the loop again and you can see now it'll go into the loop for the o the u and then it'll eventually get to here when it gets to here the character is picking up a space so this will say if the character which is a space is equal to a space then we do increment this and of course the space count now becomes two because if you remember it was storing one we initialized it at zero but it's already counted this space and now it's counted another space and of course I can now talk you through this and it'll go round and round this loop here but it'll drive you crackers listening to me do that what we will know it will eventually get to the end of the sentence and it'll eventually pick up this particular full stop here and it'll say if the character which is a full stop is the same as a space which it isn't so it won't execute this and now of course we've been round this loop the number of times we expect from the first sentence in other words we've gone round for each of the characters in this particular string and then we come to this particular program statement because this is what comes after the iteration this is the start of the next sequence of instructions and what you can see is it's going to say number of words equals the space count plus one and you should know that the space count will be 10 if you add 1 to the 10 it will be 11 and 11 is stored in the number of words this program statement is then executed and of course what it will do it will output this string to the display as you can see here then it will output the contents of this variable and of course this will have stored what the user entered so we can see that it prints this out if you fail to practice your art it will soon disappear then we go on to execute this particular program statement and of course it will output this string as you can see here and then of course it's going to output this number of words in other words what's stored in there and we should know that it should display 11 which you can see that it does and of course there is no more program statements in this particular program so we then end up with the output showing the three chevrons indicating that the program has finished executing let's just test this program against another sentence another string that's going to be entered by the user so when this program executes we have the program saying please enter the sentence the user then enters python strings are immutable and this is the second example that we looked at at the beginning of this particular video and of course what python is going to do it's going to work out how many spaces there are add one to that and then it's going to hopefully find out that there are four words so it'll then say the user entered and it will output what the user entered python strings are immutable and then it'll say the number of words in the sentence is and it'll tell us that it's four and then of course the program will end and i recommend you test your program i.e type this in and test it with this particular sentence here and any other sentences that you fancy actually entering yourself if we have a look at the program as i have it here you will see that I have a sequence an iteration inside the iteration there's a selection and then we have another mini sequence here it is often useful to actually have spaces line spaces appearing so the constructs stand out a little bit more 
as you can see here. Here you can see we've got a sequence, then I've got a space, then I've got my iteration, and inside the iteration you can see I've got a selection. Following the iteration, I've got another space followed by a sequence. Now, it's up to you whether you want to do something like this. For me, I prefer it. The reason I didn't show it like this at the beginning is simply because I wanted more space on my individual slides as I was describing what was going on. But this is something that some people do not like. Personally, I prefer it like that because it makes the structure stand out quite easily. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.